Welcome to Food and Facilities, an online show for West Coast Industrial Solutions Magazine. Our goal is to cultivate knowledge to feed the world by focusing our quarterly trade issues on safety, compliance, and innovation within manufacturing, agriculture, food processing, and food and beverage industries. In this episode, we will be discussing proactive workplace safety with James Beretti of Beretti, Inc., resources for manufacturers with Craig Sharton of CMTC Solutions, and gratitude and productivity with Lisa Ryan of Gratigy. Welcome to Food and Facilities. I'm Tara Sweeney, the Marketing Director of West Coast Industrial Solutions Magazine, and today we'll be discussing proactive workplace safety with James Beretti of Beretti, Inc., resources for manufacturers with CMTC Solutions' Craig Sharton, and gratitude and productivity with Gratigy by Lisa Ryan. Make sure to subscribe at wcismag.com forward slash subscribe for all safety and compliance news for manufacturing, food and beverage, food processing, and agriculture. My next guest is Craig Charton of CMTC Solutions. You can reach him at C-S-C-H-A-R-T-O-N at cmtc.com or give him a call at 559-317-9251. Welcome, Craig. How are you today? Good. I, that's pretty cool how that, you figured all this out, Tara. <laughs> well, I, I uh, was on my link hoping I was at the right place. Pretty slick. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you today. Can you give us a little background about you and CMTC Solutions for our listeners? Sure. Well, CMTC is a statewide nonprofit. Every state and Puerto Rico has one just like us. And we are funded through the Department of Commerce and the State of California and Department, Department of Defense and others to really get the information to manufacturers about programs or grants or training opportunities uh, that are out there for them that, you know, frankly, businesses don't have enough time to figure out what all these programs are or where they are and who they're for. And so that becomes my job is um, learning about the programs and then going to our manufacturers and telling them about them. And then I represent the San Joaquin Valley. So any manufacturer, whether it's just, uh, I have a lady that makes soap in uh, Los Banos in her kitchen. She's a manufacturer up to food companies that have thousands of employees. I know a lot of our small and medium manufacturers don't really consider themselves manufacturers. Can you give them a little more definition of what a small to medium manufacturer would look like? It, it is it is a funny thing because I think when we say manufacture, our mind goes to smokestacks and you know welders and conveyor belts, but really a winery is a manufacturer. Uh, our breweries are manufacturers. Coffee roaster uh, are manufacturers. And again, you you know. Uh, Tom Matat with First Fold Tie Dye, you know, uh, makes his product in his garage with his daughters. So um, I really like helping a lot of those folks too, especially the startups and the small guys. So um, just think if you take some product and you turn it into a new product, you're a manufacturer. We even have restaurants that maybe make and sell salsa on the side or salad dressing on the side and they don't think of themselves as a manufacturer, but they really are. And so we have programs to help them as well. And can you give us some outlines of programs that you have available and contacts you work with? And so we have a special grant available for uh, businesses that uh, are 20 or fewer employees located in the San Joaquin Valley. And we uh, that goes to they can do either 24 hours with a professional to get their HR compliance, to get their QuickBooks online set up with a CPA. Um, we have uh, several different marketing options from building a website to building an online store, uh, to having a social media strategy or working on branding and logo. Uh, we have someone that does import export 
Uh, we have people that do lean manufacturing, which is a way of becoming more efficient in your man manufacturing operations. So we have that for small guys. For the next size up, up to about 50 employees, we have some different grants that can help again with like uh, one of our manufacturers never had an online store. And so we built that store out. Uh, we have uh, funds called ETP from the state that do training. And for every one of our manufacturers, regardless of size, we have uh, a program that we're doing that was funded through the CARES Act to help our manufacturers do an assessment of where they are and put together a plan for the next 30, 60, 90 days to help them uh, come out of COVID stronger than, than they would have otherwise. And we have unbelievable people doing that. Like we have uh, Mike Goosen, who's a CPA, CFO for multiple companies, has his MBA. He's an author, a speaker, fantastic. He works with businesses if you're interested, especially in, in knowing where you are financially and what your financial goals might be. And then we have uh, Bookie Ben-Ami, who was in the original group that founded Netafim. He's built and operated plants all over the world. Um, he's a lean black belt uh, in, for lean manufacturing. And he also has his MBA in management. So we've got these two super talented, experienced uh, people in manufacturing that with no cost are working with our businesses and helping them get on a good path. And what are some things that you see that manufacturers are having a hard time with, especially now during COVID? Well, a lot of them just either are trying to get their feet underneath them and, and figure out some kind of a plan. That's where the assessment and the plan of action really help because it's been, I mean, some, some you know, just completely shut down for a few months and others have more business than they've ever had before. And some got hit with orders because everyone panicked for parts and then everything stopped for a while. So it's just hot and cold up and down. And so it's kind of, it, it seems like they're all looking for trying to find a stable growth path again. Um, we work very closely with the Fresno Regional Workforce Development Board. Training is a really big issue, uh, whether that is training on um, like lean manufacturing SolidWorks software training, we do a lot of that. Uh, high performance teams, getting people to communicate, especially new leaders. Uh, English as a second language, Spanish in the workplace, uh, uh, forklift safety training, all kinds of things that, that are in demand right now uh, that people are taking advantage of some of the training funds that are out there to get their employees trained and make an investment in them because Believe it or not, you know, you hear about unemployment and all these other things. Our manufacturers cannot find and keep enough good employees. That continues to be the number one roadblock that we have. What are some things you wish more people knew about the manufacturing industry? Well, you know, it, it really is the, the backbone of an economy like ours. Um, certainly ag is, uh, but ag also leads into a lot of manufacturing for equipment and technology and uh, packaging and all kinds of things uh, related to ag. Um, but really the main thing is it is a great way for people to have a, a stable job, you know, potential for career advancement, for potential for benefits, you know, um, you, high school degree is great you can go in a lot of these folks will do on the job training for you so it really is a way for people to enter the middle class just like we talk about having a strong middle class uh, manufacturing is a really good way to have that the other really great thing about manufacturing in our economy is people are making stuff here selling it to people outside and bringing that resource in uh, we, we, we let too much of our money leak out of the economy. We need to be bringing money into our economy. And manufacturing is a really great way to do it. And because we tend to be really nuts and bolts, practical people, uh, we're really good at it. And you yourself are a titan of locavorism. And I think by working with CMTC, you're definitely supporting our local businesses and food. I, I, I love that part. I mean, it's just, 
I mean, I don't know why anyone, go, you know, why we like to give our money to these out of town, say, restaurant where we're sending your profits. You probably don't even know where their headquarters is and you're just shipping your money out of town. You know, support the local folks, you know, our local breweries and wineries for sure. I mean, our wines are winning awards like you can't believe. Fresno State is cranking out some of the most talented people uh, through their enology program and winery at Fresno State. You know, we have a lot of stuff to be proud of here and, and really all of these businesses benefit when we become their great customer and then they can add more customers. Go ahead. Sorry, where are you seeing the manufacturing industry going in the next five years? Well, you know, I think people are gonna continue to, it's almost like either side of the spectrum uh, the people that are doing metal and other things are going to continue to uh, invest in technology. And so employees are going to want to keep their skills sharp and know how to operate that machinery. And they're going to make better wages because of the responsibility. And on the other hand, I think there's still a lot of uh, opportunity for craftsmanship and local people and uh, makers, you know, I, we, a maker is a manufacturer sort of in a different uh, um, sphere, I guess you could say. So places like IdeaWorks and Root Access and others where, um, and the pie shop where people are inventing things, learning how to make it, hopefully using a local manufacturer. Yeah, I'm working with a dentist who invented a a valve for people that have had like prostate cancer and have a, a bag to contain their urine, a better valve. So it's a retired guy, figured it out, getting it patented. Now we're gonna be looking for a local manufacturer to make it. That's really what we love to see, that innovation, creativity, hard work, supporting the locals. Do you have any events with CMTC coming up soon or webinars? You know, we have a webinar. Um, if, if anyone wants to email me, it's just C Sharton. It's S C H A R T O N, C Sharton at CMTC.com, or you can find me on Facebook or, or Twitter or wherever. Um, or easier is Fresno Craig at Gmail. Um, we have one coming up in the beginning of December. I believe it's December 10th. Uh, we're going to launch that uh, Total Concept Enterprises local manufacturer launch their online store and go have uh, uh, Liz from Total Concepts and Adrian, our web developer, local consultant, talk about the process of doing an online store for a manufacturer because they have something like 4,000 parts. So how do you build an online store? You know, it's one thing to have a screen shop and make a few different T-shirts which we love, but to get all of those different products online was quite a feat. And so they'll talk about the process that they've gone through to, to make that happen. What are some favorite projects that you've had with different local manufacturers? Oh my gosh, it's hard, it's hard to narrow it down. I will tell you, I had one, one guy who was a really good craftsman, uh, but he really didn't know the business model. He was just good at doing what he does. And that happens a lot in manufacturing. And we paired the grant with the CPA. And the next time I, I was talking to him, I asked him a question about one of his products. And he said, oh, the gross margin wasn't there for those. So we eliminated. And I said, gross margin? You didn't know what a gross margin was before you you had that grant. And, and now he, he, he knows these things. Or the people that had no employee handbook and were just kind of flying by the seat of their pants when they get that HR compliance uh, program out of the way, they sleep better at night. Those are the kinds of things I like, but we've got a really great marketing program and we've had people, you know, one little business increase their sales $4,000 a month off of our marketing program. I love that. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Well, I, you know, I think we have to, to, to beam some appreciation at you. Thanks for what you're doing here to support. I mean, you've been very entrepreneurial in what you're doing and you, you and I share that passion for wanting to help our local folks, especially in the, the food industry, but really all of our local businesses and 
and I admire uh, when we first talked about you doing this kind of stuff, just to see how far it's come. And uh, it's really great to see uh, all, of you, all of your good efforts working. Well, thank you, Craig. You are welcome, and I owe you an article, too. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> a, a hint for me and many people is never extend our deadline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always tell us you need it earlier than you do. Definitely. <laughs> So how would people get in contact with you if they wanted to reach out and get some of the resources that CMTC offers? Uh, well, I would say um, probably just do Fresno Craig at Gmail or you can call me at 559-281-9129. That's 281-9129. Um, I'll set up a Zoom call for you where you do everything remotely at this point during the pandemic. We're very conservative about that. It doesn't matter what size your business is, whether you're a startup. I help a lot of people through the beginning process of starting a business. Uh, but I just kind of go through a series of questions and we talk about your business to think about what kinds of things that you qualify for. Some are dependent on where you're located. Some are dependent on what size of a business. Um, we just got a new kind of funding specifically for food companies. Um, so uh, we just kind of go through that that uh, that spreadsheet in my brain and or that matrix in my brain until we find some things that might be the best fit for you. Um, we do have some things right now that are pretty attractive. Um, one is a training fund that's about to run out, but it's a really good one. Um, so if you have any uh, needs for training or those new uh, COVID training funds that we got, it's a really good deal if you're a food company and you've hired people since July 27th, that will qualify you for certain kinds of funding that can be helpful. So take advantage of that. We have a Made in California program. We put you on our website. It drives more traffic to your web your web page, which, you know, gooses your uh, opportunity to be in search results. Um, sometimes it helps people, especially as they're trying to, um, there's been a big shift in manufacturing where people are trying to find domestic uh, parts in their supply chain, or if they're making parts, they want to be visible so other manufacturers can find them. There's been a huge shift in people that it offshored some of their business, bringing it back onshore. So if you're in manufacturing, you wanna know about that, whether you're uh, somewhere in the middle of the supply chain or you're at the top of the supply chain, uh, that can be very helpful, but you wanna be visible. Um, I do have a list of local people that are making PPE, um, personal protective equipment, um, everything from masks to room dividers to floor decals to keep people six feet apart from each other. So whether you're a maker of any of those products, let me know and I'll add you to that list. But I'm also encouraging everyone, whether you're an individual or a business or a church or a government agency, if you're going to buy PPE, this is a great opportunity to put your focus back on local. So I've got a whole series of different masks from Snowflake Design and Wells Upholstery and First Fold Tie Dye and others um, that you can have your mask made by someone here locally um, or like the EDC just had their um, their conference room kind of set up with dividers uh, made from one of our local manufacturers. Riley's Brewing is making hand sanitizer. So, you know, you're going to spend that money, spend it here, and, and keep it here so we can keep it circulating in our economy. Definitely. Thank you for joining me today, Craig. It's always a pleasure, and I hope you have a good day. All right. Thanks, Kara. Take Bye. care. One of our sponsors today is Fine Print Plus. They're your source for print, packing, and promotion. And if you mention this ad, you can get 500 free business cards with purchase for new customers. They have graphic design, print and copies, custom apparel, promotional items, a parcel service, and now a will call and delivery service. Give them a call at 559-237-4747 or give them an email at graphics at fineprintplus.com 
or request a quote at fineprintplus.com forward slash quote. And now we will have a moment of silence for our Black Lives Matter community.